Howdy neighbors, welcome to the homestead today. I hope you're having a blessed day and uh, just going to do a little quick, sort of quick video. It's cold out here this morning and uh, we have dodged a bullet, you might say, here where we live at, at the homestead here in Oklahoma, and that we didn't get the ice storm, but out to the west of us, they had a major ice storm. I wanted to talk about that, and also wanted to talk about uh, what they told me at Atwoods yesterday when I was there. But I wanted to show you something here real quick. Oh, before I get started, if you're not a subscriber, uh, how about hitting that subscribe button if you'd like to help our channel out here it really does help us if you subscribe also if you are uh, been in some of these disasters i know down south this hurricane come through uh louisiana mississippi down through that area so uh our hearts and prayers are with you and i believe there's still some major fires going there's so much about the uh political stuff going on right now that uh you're not hearing a whole lot of the other things are kind of being told lightly but uh to the west of us here they just had a major ice storm so we just want to say to all of you that are in harm's way or uh, we still have the virus thing going on our hearts and our prayers and thoughts are with you but i want to show you something here we had rain all week long and uh had this turned into ice we would have been in trouble and uh my there's some frost you probably can't see that a little light flare this is our first frost that we've had also you can probably see it there on the wood i call it a light frost i don't know that a killing frost but we got down to 33 degrees the coldest we've had so far this fall and uh we've had just a little over five inches of rain this week so uh Had this turned into um, ice, we would have been in some deep trouble. And so I'm thankful we didn't get the ice. It, this time of the year to get this type of an ice storm is very unusual. We uh, got down in the 30s at night, but never got down to freezing. Tonight's been our lowest temperature so far. Last night was, and that was 33. And the reason for that is the clouds cleared yesterday. It's been cloudy all week long. We haven't been able to get anything done around here. It's been uh, just a mess. And uh, so uh, we have friends that live out around the Oklahoma City area. And they said that, I think it was Monday, they said that it was sounded like a war zone around there. That the trees were so weighted with ice and all the breaking and stuff when you went outside that it was really a scary sound. And uh, as of the recording of this video, our friends out there are still without electricity, been without electric all week long because of this ice storm. Another thing we had was really high winds for a while. Excuse me, uh, this cold is making my nose run. <laughs> But anyway, uh, we had uh, some really high winds. Yesterday, the wind blew out of the north. Our high was like 44 degrees, and it was cloudy, rainy, nasty. It's been that way, like I say, every day this week. But then yesterday evening, about 4 o'clock or so, the sun come out, the clouds left and went on, and uh, it started looking pretty yesterday evening. But when you get a clear... Uh, skies why then you get um, really cold temperatures and so but we just we still haven't got down to freezing here so I thank the Lord for that but to our friends out to the west here in Oklahoma they had a major they had ice storm warnings and uh, still a lot of people without electricity and uh, all around there are people still a lot of people without electricity because of this hurricane that just come through uh, uh, so anyway, lots of devastation, lots of trouble going on. I wanted to tell you something that they told me at Atwoods yesterday. I, about a 30-minute drive from here, we have an Atwoods. It's located on in Shakota, Oklahoma, down by right on I-40 there, and uh, which would be oh probably an hour east of Oklahoma City, where our state capital is. But uh, I went in there yesterday. 
they have their water and stuff like that on sale this week and I always stock up and try to keep several cases of water here. We, we drink a lot of uh, bottled water. My son especially does this time of year. He hunts a lot, duck hunts and things, so they'll take uh, keep a cooler of bottled water on hand. So I have plenty of that when we're working or whatever. If we want something to drink, we just grab a Atwood's water out of there. Some people think I have family that tease me. They think that's the only brand of water I will drink. Uh, the reason I buy Atwood's water is because it's cheap. It's $1.99 a case when it's on sale. It's like uh, $2.99 when it's not on sale, but when it's on sale, I'll go buy eight or 10 cases. So yesterday I was over there pretty close and I was like, well, I'll run on over to Atwood's and uh, it also had tractor hydraulic oil you can buy a five gallon jug for $19.99 was on sale. So those two items, I was like, well, I'll just uh, run on over. I'm pretty close, about 15 minutes away. I'll just run on to Atwoods. And so I got over there and uh, there wasn't hardly anybody there. It was, uh, in fact, there just wasn't very many people in Shakota, Oklahoma yesterday. And this week, all week here in our local town, uh, there has just not been very many people out. The stores were slow and stuff i got a feeling that today because it's sunny uh we probably have a lot of people out uh but anyway the weather's supposed to be pretty nice and i think 60s the next day or two for highs and by the end of next week uh supposed to be back up around 70 for a high so ain't that something would our trees will be wanting <laughs> to bloom back out but anyway i got to atwoods there wasn't hardly anybody there and i uh went back to the sporting goods area was looking for uh, ammo for a certain rifle that I have, and they're sold out of all their ammo and um, of, of anything of significance. They had a few boxes of shotgun shells and things like that, and uh, their firearms are really sold down. They're really running low, which I, it's my understanding that that's kind of the way it is all over the country. Um, all over the United States, anyway, that that's kind of how it is, but around here, people uh there's been a shortage and people have really been buying up but the guy behind the counter there where they sell firearms um i got a, started visiting with him and uh i'd like to visit with folks i kind of got the gift of gab so i got to talking to him and he said you know uh, i said well you don't have very many people here today and he said we well, should have been here yesterday he said, we had a ton of people here. He said, this place was so busy. So he said, today we're kind of getting caught back up and restocking the shelves. But he said, they sold out of all of their generators that they have. They always have quite a few generators there, different uh, sizes and stuff like that. And he said, they also sold out of chainsaws. And out there around the Oklahoma City area, uh, those people decided to go uh, to head east and uh, probably some went west too above there but they headed back this way and went to the Atwood store there and bought them out of uh, things to help them out with the ice storm and I was uh, surprised I was like boy that's a pretty good haul because Oklahoma City's a pretty big town you know they got Home Depot they got Lowe's they got all kinds of other places and there's several towns that have things before you ever get to Shakota. So uh, evidently people started branching out, moving everywhere, going, looking for chainsaws and, and generators. And just brings me to a thought today. If you uh, uh, haven't gotten prepared this winter, this is early for us to have this type of an ice storm, but we're seeing the hurricane still going, the fires, the ice storms, whatever could affect your area to start getting prepared and uh, be do what you can i know you can't do everything but if you think you might need a generator maybe you start looking for a generator you never know and i'll tell you something else that happens occasionally uh, is your neighbor might need a generator and if you had one and you could go and um, help your neighbor out you know say hey i got a generator and uh, we'll uh, bring it. We've uh, offered before to do that for folks here uh, that have lost power. You know, we're like, hey, we got a generator. We'll come and fix you up. Usually they've already got one or got something going. But anyway, just wanted to tell you that uh, uh, kind of get prepared, folks. I, I don't know. This winter may, I really think it's going to be a little bit worse than what we're used to. Although now, the next 30 days, they're saying here where we live, they're predicting the... Uh, 
farm forecast is to be drier than normal and also um, to be uh, at least normal temps or slightly above normal. So I'm thinking, hmm, what, what we might, might end up with a mild winter, who knows? But this little onset here is kind of early. The few days ago, we harvested all of our stuff out of the garden. We got all of our tomatoes, got our peppers, everything that we wanted out of the garden, we went ahead and got because they were predicting this ice storm coming. And we actually, there for a few days, they were saying that we were under the risk of getting some freezing precipitation. But thank the Lord, it didn't hit yet, but it will. And this little light frost here, like I say, the tomato plants behind me here, it doesn't look like they've hurt any, but I will know better this afternoon if they're all black and wilted. Uh, this little light frost we got here, it may not have hurt them enough, but we've gotten our tomatoes off anyway, so it really don't matter. But I wanted to show you a little helpful something too here while we're at it. Um, anyway, uh, sorry folks for the disruption there for just a minute i had a 18 wheeler show up here delivering metal and we've been building some new uh metal pot fences here on the homestead and we ordered metal through a company uh steel pipe uh called wheeler metals and they're located at their home office in muskogee oklahoma their family run outfit and if you happen to need metal uh give them a holler if you're in oklahoma here they'll deliver to you for a small fee and they deliver a w long ways away they even have a location in rogers arkansas up in northwest arkansas and they have other locations i'm just not familiar with i have been to the rogers arkansas store before but they're very nice people easy to work with and usually have some really good prices so just want to give a good shout out to our friends and uh here and but anyway they had this big truck and we had to get it unloaded real quick so now i'm back to the subject here and i wanted to talk about chainsaws for just a minute by the way the truck driver told me that he was just been out in uh, oklahoma city yesterday made a delivery there and he said it is awful he said the trees and the damage from this ice storm is just unbelievable he said his son works for an electric company out there as a lineman and that his son told him that it'll be at least another week before power is restored if they even get it done then uh, he said it's so much damage so our hearts and go out to those folks out there and our friends out around the Oklahoma City area and the rest of the state here of Oklahoma. But anyway, I wanted to get back to something because they're needing chainsaws. And I told you the chainsaw people had sold out. And when I was uh, a boy, we cut our own wood and everybody around here pretty much you had to cut your wood. And so me and my dad and grandpa and brother, all of us, we'd go cut wood a lot of times on Saturdays this time of the year. And we'd get out there with our chainsaws. We hit, My dad had a McCullough chainsaw. He bought it new. McCullough may be better now, but I will not have a McCullough because that thing, we would start cranking on it before we ever left here. We, we'd get to the woods, we'd crank some more. And usually about the time you were ready to maybe you had maybe a rick of wood left or just a little more to go that chainsaw would start it had a big bar on it and it could really cut wood once you got it started the thing would go but that put a bad taste in my mouth for chainsaws especially mccullough and when i was young starting out cutting wood probably nine ten year old my first chainsaw was a chainsaw kind of like was a little saw kind of like this uh dewalt here i wanted to talk about and he had a little bitty short bar like that but i it was a uh, poland chainsaw and what i liked about it is that dude would start i mean just as soon as you uh cranked on it choked a little bit that saw always started but it wouldn't stay together the bolts all come out we used like lock tied everything it was my grandpa's saw and uh in any way he took belling wire and put around it and around the whole casing and he would tighten it up well eventually the belling wire would break so it had to stop because the whole shell and everything would start coming off the chainsaw so my grandpa would grab some more belling wire out of the back of his old truck and put on there and take his pliers and twist it up real tight and then i'd go back to cutting wood again but uh he used to around here you had to get what was available and we had a uh Otasco store if you remember Otasco's used to be pretty popular now that store sold out and has become a true value store or whatever 
type hardware like that. But anyway, you'd go down there and buy everything from Otasco, and they handled Poland chainsaws. So we had several of them, but that little saw was the best one we ever did have, and it would really cut the wood, and it was light. It didn't wear you out running it, and what, what it would do, my dad and grandpa would cut the big trees down, then they would put me on the little saw, cutting up the limbs, the little wood and stuff, and getting it going, and also loading uh, stuff, get start loading and things, and they would cut the big stuff up. And uh, anyway, uh, that was our job, but I remember uh, uh, I do not like to crank on chainsaws. So I have a steel chainsaw that's gas, and what I like about it is it starts easy. So get you something that you can start and it starts easy for you. And uh, there's probably some others. I've had Husqvarna, I've had Craftsman, all these different ones. I think Craftsman uh, chainsaws are just uh, Poland's what I think, but may be wrong. I, in fact, I had about a half a dozen chainsaws here that were old ones that I hadn't used in a long time and they all went to chainsaw heaven because I felt like there's no need in fighting with them. It cost you more to try to get them repaired. I will give you a little tidbit. When you get your fuel, do not put uh, this fuel that has uh, ethanol in it um, for your chainsaws. It might run good in your cars and things like that. I have nothing against the ethanol industry but I do have a problem with using it in your lawnmowers, weed eaters, and stuff like that, unless it specifically says you want to make sure and get 100% gas. So our town has a gas station that still sells 100% gas with no ethanol in it. So that's what I use for our chainsaws, lawnmowers, and things. And I've had repair people tell me, um, lawnmower repair people, that they will work a whole lot better and they have less trouble if you use 100% gas. But their carburetors get stopped up, the jets get clogged and things with using the ethanol-based fuels. So anyway, uh, just a little tidbit there you might want to know. But something that I was uh, thinking the other day and I was talking to my dad about was there come out with these chainsaws now that are battery operated. Now you couldn't cut the amount of wood, I don't think, unless you had a whole bunch of batteries and stuff. That wouldn't be designed for for that even if you did probably wouldn't last but um but for little stuff like my dad now he's getting on up in years um or getting older and you know the uh even myself uh, cranking on chainsaw and things now that's why i have a good one a good steel one that'll start easy but you know if you if you had some people couldn't even start that maybe some women that wouldn't be able to men that elderly that wouldn't be able to but you'd like to be able to cut up some little old limbs on your property so uh, to, I had bought here the other day a Dewalt chainsaw and they have sent me word wanting me to give them a little review so I thought this would make a good time to give a quick review of what I thought about the Dewalt uh, chainsaw here uh, it's a little electric chainsaw and it is very light weight I mean it's uh, cordless and the thing doesn't weight look here one hand you just up with it your oil for your bar goes in here just like a standard chainsaw. It seals off real tight. One thing I like about this is you could put this in your closet or somewhere and you wouldn't get the gasoline fumes. My other chainsaws, if you had them inside, you would smell the gas and things. And so we've used this a little bit and the thing just works real good. And uh, I already had these batteries from um, another kit that I had, these uh, two amp hour batteries and um, um, and they work on it and uh, they did, did really well but uh, you can I was going to show you something too if you don't know this you can tell if it's charged or not just by pushing that button and it, the less charge you have it go down kind of like checking your gas it's just real easy you can know there how much battery you got left but this will work for a while but what I did was ordered some of these. I ordered, have a brush saw I'll show you sometime that's Dewalt also. But I can also use this in my all my other stuff. And I have not ran this down yet, one of these big ones. Uh, I haven't ever gotten completely down before I recharge it back up again. But I ordered two of these extra, and they're kind of pricey, but they'll uh, probably, though, if you figure, if you bought the equivalent in gas... Uh, you would spend more on gas and having to carry an extra jug of gas and everything where this is just clean and able to do. But I kind of like the idea of the uh, 
dewalt stuff and trying to keep i try to keep everything together all my different brands i keep all, everything is dewalt i do have some craftsman cordless but i'm trying to go dewalt on all of my uh cordless gadgetry so i ordered a couple of these so the chainsaw saws all i've got a, a vacuum cleaner um, um skill saw um you name it. got a grinder even that works to this 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 stuff is really neat it's so easy and you don't have to worry about dragging a cord out and everything so for somebody that needed or even for myself this is just real handy if i got a little limb you know if you're out there in oklahoma city right now and you had limbs down i mean this probably needs something a lot more than this but you could cut some low limb hanging limbs um real quick with a little old saw like this no cranking not much preparation just go get a battery i even have a fan that'll run off this battery here and if you lose electric you can have you a little fan if you want to got lights that'll run off these so you know it's real handy but i'm, I'm leaving a link uh, an amazon link we do get a little bit of a kickback here if you buy one through our link but that's not the purpose of this you can buy these everywhere now and uh but uh, I'll leave a link there in the description where you could check out at least the details and stuff. And if you wanted to order one through our deal, you'd be welcome. But uh, shop around. And I'll tell you something, too, like uh, Atwoods and uh, tractor supplies and places like that, this time of year will run a little sale. And so, um, you know, the saw like this, uh, maybe uh, regular about 100 bucks or whatever. And then... Uh, you might get 20 or 30 off. I can't remember the price, so I'm just making that up. But that, uh, but sometimes you might save 20 bucks with it on sale. Well, that's when to buy is when stuff's on sale. So, and buy now. But it also, I'd like I say, these batteries are kind of pricey, these big batteries. But I, I really would invest in them too uh, when I could. But for a while, if you're just doing a little bit of stuff, these work real well. Another thing about the big battery is when you slide it in here in the saw, is it balances the saw i can't do it with one hand but uh maybe i can do it with one hand here i'm sure i could get that if i wanted to yeah there we go so uh anyway it seems to balance the saw out better with that bigger battery versus this little skinny battery that's one thing that i have found but or that i like anyway but anyway check out this uh dewalt uh cordless brushless chainsaw well folks that's going to wrap it up for today i hope this is something that might be interest you a little bit if you need a chainsaw or whatever like i say if you're cutting up wood to burn for a fire this winter i would probably invest in a gasoline saw and a good one some good brand and uh, what i like here we buy locally like our steel chainsaws from our local hardware store here in our town of Gore. And uh, the guys there, they work on them. So if you have a problem, you just take it right back to them and they'll fix it. And I like that part of it. And I've had them fix stuff that was even out of warranty before because I buy a lot of steel stuff from them or have over the years and other things. Uh, take it in there and they're like, well, it's just barely out of warranty. We're gonna go ahead and fix it for free. I have hardly ever have anything that needed. Anything I've tore up and brought to them has been my own doings anyway. <laughs> but anyway, I sure appreciate you watching today. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time. We're gone. Anyway, speaking of chainsaws, I wanted to show you something here today, uh, them being sold out of chainsaws, and something that would be real handy, especially if you were older um, or had difficulties using a chainsaw, this might be down your alley because it doesn't require cranking or anything, and that's these little ch uh, electric uh, Dewalt chainsaw still even makes a version of this too it's just more expensive but your little batteries will fit in here that goes off your drills and things and this little dude is just really handy it's only got a 12 inch bar but uh but it gets the job done especially if you got low hanging limbs things like that or even if you just need to cut some boards it's got a little place here you put your oil in uh, for your bar just like a regular chainsaw except you don't have to put any gas in and there's no cranking you just get a good charged up battery 
These uh, DeWalt batteries also have a little gauge on them that tells you how much charge they have. They just slide out like that. You push a little button there and it tells you if all the lights light up, then it's fully charged. And that's just the little battery that comes with the uh, regular drills and things you get. So what I did, I ordered a couple of these big batteries. They fit in the same charger and they'll fit all of my stuff. And some things like this saw here, if you put this battery in here, it balances it better. And, but it's also going to give you a whole lot more power. It's going to run longer. This one's a two amp hour and this one's a six uh, amp hour and they, I've never ran one of these down yet I'm sure you can as they get older they tend to not hold as much charge but anyway I, um, I'll leave a link in on the page here to Amazon but you can order these through all different kinds of places if you do order one through Amazon we get a little bit of credit for it but that's not uh, that important as much as you can get your information there it's got some details there on the link that'll explain some things you can get these at your local hardware stores uh, wherever now uh, i'm not sure here where we live i think uh well yeah we do have a hardware store that handles the dewalt stuff it's pretty common and i think you can get them about at woods all kinds of places um sometimes they run them on sale too this isn't very expensive i think i paid uh 87 dollars for that thing so uh but i can get a hold of it and get started and uh really easy so if you want to check that out there might be something that you could have if you've got dewalt tools i try to have all the same stuff so i've got a bunch of dewalt stuff do you have some craftsman cordless but i can use my batteries and things in my drills i've got a skill saw that's cordless uh, saws all that's cordless got a pole saw that's cordless all these different tools in fact I've got a link on Amazon too of the tools that I like to use around the homestead and it's got I've got the cordless listed there and um, I even have a cordless Dewalt vacuum cleaner and it really works handy instead of, and I got a little blower that uh, works so all that stuff but anyway today I just want to talk about chainsaws because if you had one of these put back somewhere you're not going to have the old gas smells, nothing like that from it, although they do have oil in them. But you could take that uh, um, saw and put in your closet or wherever and have it put back. It does come with a chain guard to go over that. And you could store it back and put it up and, and have it in case you run into an emergency. And uh, anyway, I appreciate you watching today. May God richly bless you, and we'll see you next time. We're gone. Well, folks, I got interrupted there for just a minute and I had a delivery, a metal deliverer. We're building some pipe fencing here and uh, we ordered metal through a company called Wheeler Metals. And I just wanted to give them a shout out. And uh, if you need metal supplies and you're in Oklahoma, they even have a store up in Northwest Arkansas. They have one in Muskogee, Oklahoma and some other locations i'm not sure where all but they'll actually deliver deliver to your place for you as well but they just made me a delivery here and i sure, certainly appreciate them so give our friends at wheeler metal a call if you're within distance of them but uh, they deliver all the way to oklahoma city so they got a pretty big area that they go to but the truck driver just got through telling me how bad it was in uh, uh, oklahoma city area and that the uh, ice storms and stuff up there, the tree limbs and stuff. So it's pretty bad out that way. And I'm glad we missed it out here in our neck of the woods.